The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Popolizio is a wondrous thing. And for you pack wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. Wolfpack Nation, this weekend is your last chance to see the sixth ranked Wolfpack wrestling team in home action. And what better way to kick off the last week of the regular season than with a brand new episode of the Pack Mentality Pop Ins Podcast? Welcome, wrestling fans. I'm your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt. And here with me, taking a quick break from some film studying today, is the head coach of the Wolfpack, Pat Pablizio. Good afternoon, Brian. Pat, it's going to be a packed episode of the Pack Mentality's Pop In Podcast. It's a lot of peas in there. Yeah. But I made the executive decision, no guests this week, even though we've been crushing it lately with some entertaining guests. But there's just too much Wolfpack wrestling action to cover. So you're going to have to carry this episode even more than usual. I'm ready for it. A lot to talk about. It's been an action-packed week last week and uh, moving forward, even going to be busier. And you're exactly right. We're going to take a look back at an exciting night of action and recap the win over North Carolina, then turn our attention to a pair of top 10 home duels this weekend as Wolfpack faces number eight, Virginia Tech, on Friday night. Then number two, Ohio State, is in Reynolds Coliseum on Sunday afternoon. That's right, Wolfpack wrestling fans. There will be two top 10 duels in Reynolds this weekend. If you have not done so already, please head over to gopack.com slash buy tickets and purchase one for one duel or get a couple for the second duel. You can purchase tickets the day of the matches in the Reynolds ticket office as well. And Pat, on our last pack podcast, we teased a big surprise for those that came to Reynolds for the North Carolina duel last Friday night. We got messages on Twitter, and I'm sure you heard from pan- fans after the match. But that raise mat was truly unique for an AC s- school. It was the first time that we had that set up, or any other school had set that set up. Take us behind the scenes a bit, and how did the idea come together? No doubt about that. Uh, big surprise, a lot of planning in place, and uh, very thankful for the people that made this all come together because um, it wasn't easy. You know, special thanks to women's basketball being able to move some of their uh, logistics around to allowing us to set that up. And then I know facilities worked extremely hard, even through, uh, you know, the business office getting some of the moving components. Um, That was something we were working on for a very long time and uh, actually came together probably the week right before getting the final okay on that. So, you know, it was something rewarding for the, the guys that are a part of this program at the end of the day, for all the, the people that are, have been helping and, and supporting this program. This was kind of a token of appreciation for the guys going out there and uh, putting it on the big stage because no, no better uh, dual meet than uh, to do it with the in-state competition. And uh, obviously, I thought it was very exciting atmosphere. They are our rivals, so it was always good to get a win over them. But we put out a call to action throughout the week leading up to the UNC duel for Wolfpack fans to fill Reynolds Coliseum. We have such great fans, but it wasn't just them. The band was there, their cheerleaders, the mascots, former WWE wrestler Hurricane Helms was sitting in the front row. That was the largest crowd to come watch a wrestling match in Reynolds, and I know you and the team are very appreciative. Absolutely. You know, to continue to build and and be one of the you know top programs in the country, we we've got to continue to grow this fan base, and uh, it's happening little by little right now. That was a great turnout. You know, people coming down here and uh, you know traveling to come to the dual meets, and uh, we're working on some some better seating for people that are obviously actively involved in the program and, and making that a priority for the people that are back in the program so this is uh things are starting to move in the right direction as far as the uh, fan base goes i will say those people can thank me because i have been pushing for better seats courts or mat side actually so we'll see we're still working on it we have some different setups here little by little uh that record crediting sat crowd saw nc state claim a 26 to 7 win over number 24 north carolina and push the pax acc record to a perfect four and as we head into this final weekend After the two teams split the first two bouts, NC State won six in a row to take a commanding lead. The Pack won eight of the ten matchups and added a pair of bonus point wins. Pat, we'll talk about some of the individual matchups, but just speak on the team's overall effort in this win. 
Yeah, they came out ready to wrestle. Um, I, and what I like best about it is I don't think it was our best wrestling, which is still part of the training phases we're going through. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, our focus has to be the end of the year. And uh, that makes it challenging when you get in some of these dual meets because you want to be at your best. And, uh, you know, both you, you, you don't understand what both teams are going through. Some, some teams are doing different kind of training. But for us to go out there and win eight matches off a very good, tough, competitive North Carolina team obviously made a very big statement where we're at with this program. And even to have a guy, you know, last minute make a change at 165 and, and even getting the win there. Um, I, I like the way our guys competed and the pride that they take into this kind of matchup. And I have to thank Pete Renda for this next term, but we've talked to Paul before about manufacturing points for bonus wins. But I don't recall us talking about the importance of defense. Um, in going over some notes of the win over the Tar Heels, in those eight wins, NC State only conceded two takedowns, and both of those were in the first period. So I wanted to ask you about defense and wrestling, just being in good position not to get scored on. How much do you guys work on practice, you know, over in practice working on defense, and how crucial is it for guys to buy into it? Yeah, I think that sets the tone a lot of times in the matches. You know, we want to be in a very offensive team. We want to put points up. We want to be aggressive because that's ultimately what's going to win national titles. Um, on the flip side of that, you know, we don't we want to be stingy. We don't want to give up any points, um, you know, unless somebody earns it. And, and obviously that happened uh, f- last Friday. We're wrestling a good team. It's going to happen. And as long as we continue to move forward and be aggressive, we'll be fine. But it's something we focus in on a lot. Um, and I think our guys obviously are very skilled in that in that side of things. So uh, it works to our advantage at times. Now, the duel started at 165, like you mentioned, at Redshirt Junior. Sam Malikian got the starting nod. After falling behind 2 nothing, Sam got a takedown and a four-point near fall in the second for a six-point move that paved the way to his 10-4 to win. Now, in basketball, he might be called a glue guy. In football, a Swiss Army knife. I'm just not sure what a good wrestling analogy is, but Sam started the season at 149. He's seen action at 157 and even wrestled all the way up at 174 in a duel. Now, this time, it was his first correction at 165, so... What made you decide to give Sam the start in this one? How is his versatility helping you with all the different weights that he's been at? Yeah, you look at Sam Malikian and he defines what, you know, a team player is all about. Uh, I think that shows you the kind of person he is. You know, don't forget he's a engineer major here as well. So he's putting countless hours in on the academic side of things, getting really good grades. Um and then just shows what he what he's willing to do for this team. And you need those kind of guys to build a program. We got a lot of those guys associated with this program, the guys that will put the team in front of them because that was you know last second change. We just um, had some minor things happen that we needed to make that adjustment um, right before the duel started. And we felt it was our best chance of winning that night at that weight class. So we made that switch last second. It wasn't something we were planning on doing until after weigh-ins. Um, So, you know, we called upon him. And and the funny thing is, is Sam, we trained really hard this past week for the the team and uh, more so for the guys that we knew weren't going to be wrestling in those duels. And Sam, I think, did two a days the last two days, lifted earlier that day real hard and heavy and uh, definitely was not prepared to be thrown out there. And that just shows you the mental toughness a kid like that has to go out, bump up a weight class and, and get that win. After UNC went up 4-3 with the major, the pack reeled off six straight wins. Uh, starting that stretch was Pete Renda at 184 with an 8 nothing major decision over number 18 Ness. Pete improves to 4-0 and in ACC action, and he's outscored his conference foes 49-6 to thus far this year. So that's just incredible. And with this win, Pete was the ACC Wrestler of the Week, and he told me today the first time he's won that award, so I'm glad I nominated him. But Pete... He just continues to go out there and get you points at 184. Yeah, this is the time for him to shine. Um, it's funny you mention that because he's had some really big wins in his career, you know, over the years. And, uh, I think just people label him as, as being that good that some of those, we overlook some of those matches. And, you know, Chip Ness has been around and he's won some, some good matches. So for Pete to go out there and dominate the way he did, I think that tells you, you know, the level he's at. And, you know, we might have seen it in matches where Pete hasn't put up a lot of points, and I think it's just because the level of competition he's been seeing is just, you know, 
I think he gets up for the bigger matches now where he's at in his career. And no better time for him to open up and let things fly than uh, last week and then moving forward, closing out the season. And I think you're going to see that with him, um, watching him in the room and zoning in and how focused he is. We're going to see Pete Renda, what he's capable of doing now, and uh, we're going to get a true test this weekend. And I know he's looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to the challenges that lie ahead for him as well. I think you're looking ahead. We're going to talk about some of those challenges. A bunch of our guys have a bunch of challenges this weekend. But Michael Machiavello, we talked. He wanted to avenge that loss in last year's duel, and he did so. He got a 3-2 win over 19 – or excuse me, number 16 shade. Um, it was a grinded-out battle. Mock got in on the legs in the first period and scored the bout's lone takedown. So he's winning some different ways recently. Yeah, got to find ways to win against a uh, different style of wrestling. Um, and he did that. And I know last year uh, he took that one to heart um, and made sure it didn't happen this year. And I'm sure those guys, you know, they're probably going to see each other again. Um, probably at the NCAA tournament could be a good chance from now to then. Those guys are going to run into each other again. And, I, you know, I know Mox keeps continuing to improve and uh, work working on things that he needs to get better at. And uh, like, the, you know. The way he went out, he started firing offense um, early, and uh, we got to just continue to capitalize on that. But it definitely was a it was a match that you had to grind out, and it was uh, you know, a lot of different opportunities for for probably both guys to score. And it, uh, score was a lot of action actually for a score that was only three to two, I believe, was the final score. So you know there was definitely a lot of hand fighting going on, and uh, I think it was one of those where we learned some things that match. And I think Reynolds Coliseum shook a couple of times, and not just from the roar of the crowd, but Michael Boykin had some serious takedowns. He scored four in his bout. He won 10-3 to three at heavyweight and just kept attacking their heavyweight. You said it before, you want him to be more aggressive. He really got after it with a couple of the slams. Yeah, that was a perfect time to do it up on that stage. It, it definitely shook the floor a little bit. Um when we recruited Michael Boykin, that's what we recruited. We recruited an athlete and a wrestler like that that's uh, capable of doing those kind of things. And I'm happy and excited to see that he's attacking. You know, his, if you look, he's basically doubled his attacks over the, since probably the scuffle. And I think he learned that if he's wrestling and he's attacking, you know, he's going to put himself in position to win way more than he'll be in position to lose. And, uh, He's doing that now, so uh, this is a good time for him to be firing like that because, uh, again, Friday night, another big match for him, a kid that we lost to uh, early in the year. But uh, I'm sure we're going to talk about that later, so I won't comment you, too much. See, you, you've learned. I've yelled at you once on this podcast already. You adapted, but it, it's amazing what a couple of top 10 wins will do at, for you at the scuffle. Uh, yeah, it'll put you in position to compete with the best guys in the country. Now, the Reynolds crowd, they got to see Redshirt Jr. Sean Files for the first time this season. He started his second duel of the year at 125. You've said on every other podcast that we'd be seeing him in and out of the lineup a lot this year. But you have to be happy he came away with a 16-2 to two major and probably would have been a pin if Tim time didn't run out. Definitely. He's a, uh, he's a guy we love having in our lineup. He's a winner. He's a true competitor, and uh, he's tough, and I think you see the style that he wrestles out there. It's not one that's going out to definitely be playing around. So uh, happy that he's back because he sets the tone in a lot of these matches, and uh, I just love seeing him compete. And 133 in the ACC, it might be the deepest weight. Uh, five of the six wrestlers are ranked, including your redshirt freshman Tariq Wilson at 19. Tariq picked up a very crucial 4-1 win over number 20 Sherman, scoring the bouts lone takedown the second. Fans can really see the improvement week to week, and that was such a quality win here for Tariq going forward. Definitely. That's, uh, you know, that's what our program's built on is improvement, and uh, that's what we challenge our guys to do each week because I think if you look where these guys started the season and uh, the progression that Tariq's made, I think he's made some big gains um, throughout the, the season and is continuing to do it, and confidence is high right now. Um, he's had some big wins over the last couple of weeks, and uh, he's right in the mix of things. And, and we're still, you know, the good thing with him is we still have time to continue to improve before the season's over, and he will do that, and that's what's making him as good as he is. And two of your hammers closed out the UNC win with a pair of ranked victories. Uh, number two, Kevin Jack, was in control the whole way and got a 
decision over number 20 Headley at 141, while Hydley for NC State, number three in the country, was the aggressor in the third period. He had four takedowns, and with a 12-6 win, those two keep producing team points. They're combined 25-0 and in duels this season. Yeah, it's uh, great having both those guys in the lineup because they do. They win. Um, Kevin's match score-wise a little closer than he wanted. I can tell he was upset. Um he wants to put up points, and that's what we want. We want guys that are, you know, he walked off that mat not satisfied, and uh, that's good because now coming Friday, I I'm, I'm, can tell you he's not going to let that happen again, and uh, we got a good challenge in front of us, so that'll be good for, for Kevin to go out there and see if he can change that around in one week, and I feel good about that. He usually likes putting up points, so we're going to let that one fly uh, on Friday, and then, you know, Hayden, that was a that was a match for the first five minutes. That was a match, and uh, he refused to let that be a match. And I think you saw the determination in him, and the focus that he has, and that goes all back to his, you know, what he does to prepare each week for his opponent and the way that he trains. He's not gonna let somebody sneak up and uh, steal a win from him, and uh, that's what makes him great. Now, I hope our fans noticed, but the format of the podcast switched up a little bit this week. We put the we put the Wolfpack fans in great moods with this first episode by recapping the North Carolina win first. Now we're going to hit them up with some plugs. Uh, if you like our podcast and have not done so already, please go in and subscribe to the Pack Mentality Poppins podcast wherever you listen to all your favorite podcasts, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Google Music Play, Stitcher, and that's just to name a few. And once you listen and once you decide that you like what we are doing, please head over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. All you have to do is type in Pack Mentality, it's one word, and leave us a review, and you know you will be entered with free NC State wrestling gear. If we mention your review on a future episode, free gear is all yours. And of course, that's a great segue into picking out this week's winner. The winner for some free gear I picked out this week is Raleigh Bob for leaving his review on our podcast on February 11th. Raleigh Bob, just DM us on Twitter, at Pack Wrestle to claim your prize. And with a name like Raleigh Bob, we better be seeing you and Reynolds this weekend for our two home duels. And that's just a perfect segue into talking about the upcoming weekend of NC State Wrestling excitement. And I tell you what, this podcast should keep getting better and better each week with these segues. Well, we got a great host that's uh, doing a phenomenal job putting out some great stats and good info. Uh, what What is Raleigh Bob winning this week, Brian? Brian has to go down to the equipment room and see what is available and what sizes are available. I think we should definitely pick out some Raleigh special. Bob will get hooked up. All right. So NC well, State. Well, he's got to show up for the duels, uh, either Virginia Tech or Ohio State. If not, I, I think we move on. I said both. All right. I mean, let, let's go big Good. on this guys. But NC State returns to home action this weekend as the Wolfpack will host number eight Virginia Tech Friday night at 730 and then make a quick turnaround and host number two Ohio State Sunday at 430, also in Reynolds. Pat, the Wolfpack fans showed up for that win over North Carolina, and we would love once again to see Reynolds packed red for both of these top 10 matchups. Big weekend, um, no doubt about it. We need that support. These guys fuel off that energy. It makes a great atmosphere for college wrestling, and uh, it would be great to see that filled up again on both Friday and Sunday. Now, I guess the Hokies, we're going to be celebrating senior night as NC State will honor nine seniors prior to that ACC duel. Six of the seniors right now are currently ranked in starters, and those six have combined for 463 wins here at NC State, all with at least 60. Pat, it's been a while since you've had this many seniors on his squad, but this group really lay, laid the foundation of what has turned into NC State being ranked in the top 10 every week over the last three years. When you look at what? these guys have done over the last five years it's been unbelievable um their commitment to nc state and just all around you know developing this program these guys are a huge part of this and uh definitely their work does not go unnoticed they they they're winners for a reason and uh you know it's been a great just keeping these guys together for as long as they've been here, you know, that's the reason why there's great chemistry right now. And, and the best part about it is they've uh, cultivated the younger guys as well. And now that's creating a great culture and a uh, lot of, lot of leaders, not just here at NC state, but you're going to see these guys go on to the next phase of their lives and uh, do something special um, 
and and still, you know, I think you're going to see these guys. These guys care about NC State athletics and wrestling here, and they're going to be around. They're going to be around for the long haul. So this season actually marks the third year in a row both NC State and Virginia Tech come into the final weekend of the regular season with identical 4-0 and records in conference action. The dual Friday night will determine the ACC dual championship. Pat, one of the first team goals you guys set out was to finish undefeated in ACC duels for the first time since 2000. So needless to say, there's a lot on the line Friday night in this top 10 battle. Yeah, the guys, you know, that's coming from the, the team. That's Obviously, we have our goals as coaches, but at the beginning of the year, these guys wrote their goals, and that's something they're zoned in on, and that's what's going to make this a great duel because I know, you know, Virginia Tech as well has got the same goals, and that's what you need. You need good, hard competition to get you ready for the uh, the next phase of this season, and no doubt about it, it's going to be a great, great duel meet, action-packed with some very high-level, hard-nosed wrestling. And while working on some notes this week, I came across this stat, which to me speaks at how improved the ACC is. Over the last three seasons, NC State ranked second nationally in dual winning percentage, having gone 50 and 4, while Virginia Tech is close behind ranking third nationally with their mark of 48 and 5 over the last three years. Only Penn State has a better record than these two conference teams. The battles between the Pack and the Hokies have been fun to watch recently, and this should be another one to add to the archives. Those are some impressive stats right there. Um, no doubt about it. And and I know both teams obviously have wrestled very challenging schedules, so those are no you know cakewalk wins for the majority of them. So that's that's impressive on, on both teams. I'm not sure if you meant impressive that I found that out and figured that out, or if that's no, impressive. Or... You're you're impressive in every aspect when it comes to stats. We, we no one can challenge you there. One day I will get paid to host this podcast, and it'll be. We're great. getting there. You got to start somewhere. We're getting there. But the Hokies enter the duel at 14 and two. Uh, they moved up to number eight this week in the national rankings. Uh, Pat, second duel in a row. 18 of the 20 starters for the two teams are ranked in the NCAA coaches panel, and we could be seeing eight. Eight ranked matchups. This should be a tough fight for the Wolfpack. No easy matches come Friday night. Uh, we're well aware of that, and that's what's going to be the uh, you know that's what's going to make this great duel meet. And it has the last couple years. There's been some very intense, hard fought battles, and I know you know there, a lot of these guys are very familiar with each other. They, I'm sure they've wrestled um, some guys back and forth over the years. So uh, you know we we got to come in ready to uh, challenge for for the ACC dual championships and we talked earlier about the 133 pound weight class in the acc uh, Tariq finishes his season facing four in a row that are ranked virginia tech's dennis gustafson sits number 18 and he was the acc champion in this weight class as a true freshman in 2014 we've said it in every episode about this weight but another good matchup on paper definitely this is going to be another one action-packed i think it's going to have a lot of say in uh you know, obviously every match is going to matter. So this is one. Obviously, these guys are neck and neck with each other with some good quality wins this year. And uh, it's one of those I'm looking forward to see where we're at. We get to get tested again. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been an easy schedule for Tariq since uh, second semester. But he's been ready for these challenges and uh, has continued to improve. So I think he got a great test last Friday. Another one coming this weekend. So it's going to be good, good. Hard-fought battle for him. And the Hokies have had some movement at the 149 and 157 weight classes lately. Number 16, Ryan Bleese, has secured the starting spot at 149, it appears. And that's actually pushed up two-time All-American Solomon Shisko up to 157. What does it say about Bleese that he's starting at 149 over a two-time All-American? I think it was a good move for him. It's shown that it, uh, you know, make dropping down to 49. He's had a lot of success there. So that's another matchup that's going to be neck and neck. Um, I think, you know, one of those, we just got to go out, wrestle, and uh, let it fly. And I know both those guys are very aggressive, great conditioning. And uh, it's going to be uh, another good match that you're going to want to, fans are going to want to see because I think it's going to be pretty, pretty high scoring match there. Um, 57. Yeah, they've made some changes there. Um, I like where we're at and, and their, our style of wrestling, I think, matches up pretty well at 57. doesn't matter. I know they've switched some guys there, and no matter who they wrestle, you know you're going to get a tough, hard-nosed match. So uh, we're ready for that, and I think, you know, Hayden, if you've seen him wrestle and his style and his conditioning, he's uh, going to be in a good spot mentally and physically for the, for whoever they throw out in the mat to compete. 
I'm sure the matchups everybody is looking forward to come at two of the upper weights where the Pack and Hokies combined for four wrestlers ranked in the top eight nationally at 184 and 197. At 184, number three, Renda will take on number eight, two-time defending ACC champion Zach Zavasky. And at 197, number seven, Michael Machiavella faces number two, two-time All-American Jared Hott. How crucial are these matches for both teams? These are big. Um, you know, I think obviously 184, there's a lot of history there with those two guys. So the good news is we've had a year off to uh, develop and get better technically. And uh, we haven't obviously wrestled. Pete hasn't wrestled um, in a year, you know, in this kind of dual meet. So he's made some big big improvements on the technical side of things. And um, I think it's been healthy for his development and growth. And I think this is where those kind of things come out and shine now is the bigger and better competition you get to see. You got to, you got to utilize, you know, your training and the stuff that you've been working on. And I think we'll see that out of Pete. Um, and it's definitely going to be a, one of those matches that's going back and forth. And, um, you know, we know that and he knows that. And it's just one of those, you got to be ready to battle and it's, Nothing's going to be given, um, and that's what you want at this time of the year to get you ready. Because again, these guys are probably all going to see each other at some point again. Um, obviously, ACCs and NCA, so this is just another match to kind of prepare you for that. And then uh, 197. I know this is a match Mock's been looking forward to. Um, you get a chance to wrestle one of the better kids in the country that's proven himself. You know, you you want that opportunity, and uh, we want to see where we're at and get in, in that true test right now at this time of the season, there's no better time to see that. And it's one of those where he's going to get that basically back to back on a Friday and Sunday. So it should be a, an exciting weekend from Machiavello. Again, Wolfpack fans secure your tickets now and come to Reynolds Coliseum this Friday night to watch NC state and Virginia tech battle for the ACC dual title. Visit gopack.com slash buy tickets or stop by the ticket office the day of the duel. And while you're getting those tickets to the Pack and Hokies duel, go ahead and get your tickets for Sunday's duel against number two, Ohio State. And Pat, that's another great segue. But with Virginia Tech being Friday night, what made you want to schedule Ohio State for Sunday and having two duels in this last weekend of the regular season? One of those kind of just getting high level competition this time of the year. You know, you have your whole season to prepare you for this moment and it's a you know i kind of look at it like the, the level of competition whether it's you could switch those duels to a sunday friday it doesn't matter what team you wrestle first you're getting two really high level guys um obviously some guys are ranked as high as number one in the country two three you know wherever you're at it's going to prepare these guys you get to the national tournament you're wrestling back-to-back -back high level competition so we needed that this is a true test we get to do it at home a um, little break in between. And, you know, NCAs is a three-day tournament. So, obviously, we're not wrestling on Saturday, but still got to make weight and, and do your adjustments you need mentally. You know, whether you win or lose, you mentally have to turn around and wrestle a high-level guy on Sunday, and you got to be ready to battle just as hard as you were on Friday, uh, whether you're a little sore, tired, whatever you're feeling. And uh, we need that test now so we can be ready come March when uh, – when it matters most at the NCAA tournament. You wanted competition. I would say you got it. Ohio State has been ranked number two this entire season and comes to Raleigh with a 13-1 record. Nine of the 10 Buckeye star starters are ranked in the top 10 in their weight class with five ranked in the top five. Pat, needless to say, this is a pretty talented team when you look at their records and rankings. Absolutely. You know, you look at the body of work uh, – Coach Tom Ryan's done. He's done a phenomenal job building that program up and getting producing national champs every year. Um, and we want we want to take that on. We want to know where we're at as a program and uh, be ready for that level of competition. Um, yeah, there's no doubt about it. And you know what people are telling me too is there's a lot of Ohio State fans in Raleigh that are going to be coming out to this match. So I challenge our fans to make sure that uh, we uh, drown that out and have a very good support group of people that are here come Sunday for that as well. You know, we need Friday and Sunday. I would say the same thing with Friday. Virginia Tech has been known to travel well. And yeah, absolutely. You know, good programs have a good fan base that travel. They support their team. And uh, there's a reason why they're, you know, one team's obviously in the position to win a national title and year in, year out. You know, Virginia Tech's one of the top teams in the program, uh, country. So, you know, we got to keep 
keep building on that and our fan base because all that stuff plays into the the results. Ohio State is led by two-time defending NCAA champion, 2016 gold medalist, 2018 world medalist, Kyle Snyder. Last time Wolfpack fans got to see Snyder was in action against the pack in the 2016 NCAA Finals when him and Gwizdowski went to overtime and Some consider that the best heavyweight match of all time. Whoever gets to start at heavyweight for the pack, whether it's Michael Boykin or Malik McDonald, how must they attack this matchup? Uh, You just got to go in there. You know, obviously you're wrestling best guy in the world. That's won gold medals, world championship. So you have nothing uh, to lose in in a situation like that. You know, the the guy's used to winning his his whole career. So you want to see where you're at. You want to see, you know, if you can score offensively on him, you know you're doing something right. And if you can stay in those matches and win certain positions, you can make steady gains because he's obviously the highest level, the world the world level. So um, college wrestling is different. It's obviously a different game, and Matt wrestling plays in certain areas. So it's one of those. you you gotta you got to rise to the occasion um, and, and not let, history catch up and be a part of that at the same time you know you got to respect somebody at the level they're at so there it's a not an easy task to do you know no matter who's wrestling heavyweight in that kind of situation but um i'm i'm excited to see who shows up to compete and uh how they go out there and and carry themselves because that that i think defines no matter who you are as a person that says a lot about a guy if they're willing to step up and compete against that high level competition and, and not I would say more embrace it than run from it. And that's what we want as a program. That's kind of why we're wrestling the level people we are, uh, the programs we are, so we can embrace that challenge and and not run from it. Because at the end of the day, when you get down to the national tournament, you're going to hit these guys and you got to be, you got to be ready to roll and uh, believe in everything that we're doing and that you can win a national title. You got to have that confidence. A little bit of Wolfpack history here. Uh, back during the 2016 season as a redshirt freshman, freshman Malik McDonald faced Missouri's Jaden Cox in a duel here in Raleigh. Cox went on to the 2016 Olympics and got the bronze medal that. But that day against Malik, he only got a 5-1 decision, and that kept the score close enough where Gwizdowski came in, got the tech fall in the final bout, and NC State pulled out an 18-17 win over number 5 Nebraska, and that capped that 23-1 season. That was a great performance by Malik back then. Yeah, and that was uh, one of those two. It was decided right at Wayans um, that he was going to wrestle. And, you know, you get in these dual meets, all those little matches like that, those are little victories, whether you win or lose, you know, saving a major, getting the majors, those play out big time at the end of the results um in dual meets when the, you know when you're neck and neck winning five and five you know those bonus points can play a huge factor in it um and very well could be that you know um as we get in these next couple duels or that that could play out you know if our guys come ready to compete you know we're going to need to score some bonus points and um and at the same time if we're in position and you know maybe it's a guy gets caught in something you got to defend that off because it you watch a lot of duels this year. That's uh, the deciding factor in, in a lot of them. Um, and it, better to be on the winning side of that than the losing side, that's for sure. And back to the Ohio State matchup. I think we could break down every single individual match because there are going to be a lot of top 10 battles against the Buckeyes. But 125, 141, 157, 184, 197, they all feature wrestlers ranked at the top of their weight classes. And we mentioned him earlier talking about Virginia Tech, but 197, Michael Machiavello, he'll face number two hot Friday night and then number one more on Sunday. Maybe at the NCAAs, you'll face number one and number two in consecutive matches, but a pretty historic weekend of matches for Mock closing out his home career. Definitely. And uh, I I like where we're at for this challenge because this is something he feeds off of. He knows it's a challenge for him and uh, he's ready. He's been training the right way and smart. Um, And it's just like I told him, be ready to go in the national tournament seated on the bottom side or the top side. And you're going to have to beat one of these guys. And then you're going to have to face the the next guy in the national finals. And that's the mentality you got to take on this is let's treat it like that and see where we end up. Um, cause they are, they're both guys that are very well accomplished and, and great wrestlers and have had a lot of success. So it'll, it'll give us a true test of where we're at and, um, continue to, to work on things. And it'll be exciting to see where we stand when this weekend's over at 197. 
And we could see a great battle at 125 with Sean Files and former national champion and three-time All-American Nathan Tomasello. Uh, this is a little bit of a different contrast in style. Sean, what might pe- people might describe him as tall and lanky. Tomasello is more like a typical 125 pounder. He's a little short and compact, but this could be a matchup we'll see at the NCAAs. Yeah, no doubt about it. That is uh, two guys with two different styles. Um both guys, I feel like, wrestle extremely hard and are true competitors. Um, it's one of those matches we got to be ready for and know, you know, you're wrestling a guy that's got experience and is one at the highest level in, in all all levels. So um, good test for us. We need it. And that's why, uh, again, that's why we're wrestling a team like Ohio State on Sundays to see where we're at and what we need to do moving forward. But definitely like the the attitude of our guys and and they're ready for the challenge that lies ahead for the weekend in the battle at 141 these two have combined to place third at the last two ncaa championships but never face each other in a college duel kevin jack will take on number seven joey mckenna who transferred to ohio state from stanford they're combined 27 to 2 this year what are you looking forward to in that matchup uh it's one of those you know i think you said it you know both guys are have produced at the national tournament so both have experience and um, I think offense is going to be key you know what guy gets their offense going and uh, I know we like to attack a lot so that's going to be very interesting to make sure we continue to score points and put them up and uh, let things fly and it's one of those where they've you both these guys have been some the top guys of 41 year in and year out they've been at the top um, you know, one of the, the, I don't know exactly where in the rankings at times, but they've been up there and they've never faced each other, uh, maybe in freestyle, which isn't obviously our best style. Um, so I'm not going to really count that too much against Kevin because his freestyle career isn't uh, all that accomplished. So, uh, you know, in folk style, they haven't wrestled. And uh, I think this is the first time they're going to match up and, uh, and wrestle. And it'll be another good, entertaining match. And the last one I want to touch on, it's a classic Pennsylvania versus Ohio battle at 157. Roger freshman Hayden Hiley will face 2017 All-American Micah Jordan, whose brother bows the starter at 174. But yet another match you could see late on Friday or Saturday at the NCAA championships. No question about that one. And that's, uh, again, that's going to be another great test for us. And it's what we need right now because... He's been very dominant in a lot of his matches, and this is another one that, you know, level of competition obviously is going to be up there, and we got to get up for it, you know, getting through Friday and, and turn around Sunday. These are just like you're going to see at the national tournament. You're going to have a high, maybe it's a low, maybe you squeak by a win, and now you got to be ready for a guy that's maybe more accomplished, and, um, you got to get, you got to get yourself up for it on the, on the next day or two days in. So that's why we're doing this, and, uh, I like the test that, you know, get the test to see where we're at because I think it's a, it's a good style for Hayden. It's going to be very hard nosed, very a lot of good hand fighting, and uh, we'll see who gets their offense going. But I like where we're at and uh, the, the level of training that Hayden's been been able to, to to do over the last month. That was a lot of information we gave the Wolfpack fans, and without a guess, we really did a lot of talking. You had your coffee over there, I had my hot tea, but. We power through it. The guys are getting two matches. We gave the fans a long podcast here today. Yeah, it was well needed because there's a lot to cover from last weekend and then moving forward. This is a big weekend for NC State wrestling and, uh, you know, keep things moving in the right direction. So we appreciate uh, everybody coming out to the matches last Friday and continuing to support us this weekend. I think I'd be safe in saying this might be the biggest weekend of home duels in very recent history, but even going back in the record books for you guys. Uh, You can't forget that weekend that we we were at the barn. It was good. It was similar stuff Friday and Sunday. I did like the whole Hauser, but that year that was the Virginia Tech, Missouri Missouri double dip there. So another great weekend that you set up here. And Wolfpack fans, we hope to see you in Reynolds Coliseum this weekend as the Wolfpack hosts number eight Virginia Tech for top ACC Bragg and Rights Friday night and then hosts number two Ohio State on Sunday at 430. Buy those tickets on gopack.com slash buy tickets. Pat, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for breaking it down. And we want to see everybody out there for both duels this weekend. Let's fill up Reynolds. I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Poppins podcast covering all things NC State wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack wrestling fans, go Pack! The Pack Mentality Poppins podcast is produced by the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to matttalkonline.com.